everybody, it's Stacey Duffy here, your Denver Metro Real Estate Resource. And yeah, it's it's shifting and I'm excited. <laughs> so I shot a video probably four or five weeks ago about Denver Spring Market and kind of conditions and how it's starting to turn just a little bit. So this is, I would say what's happening at least at the moment is a very, very typical seasonal shift. It's happening a little earlier than we would typically see. Normally, this is the kind of shift that happens towards the end of May, early June. Buyers start to get busy. There's less buyers in the market. There's, you know, multiple offers on some houses, but not, it's not the medieval bloodbath that it has been. It's like four, five, eight offers instead of 15, 20, 30 offers, which I know four, five, and eight still sounds crazy, and it is crazy, but it's not as crazy as it was. So, also, um, and that typically happens towards, you know, Memorial Day in early June. This year it's happening a little bit sooner. Um, I think kind of what spurred that is just how long our market has been so aggressive and so crazy. Our season also started a little sooner, right? So our aggressive, you know, early year market started in November, December. It usually wouldn't start till January or early February. So we started a couple months earlier where it looks like we're tapering off maybe a month early. Um, and the interest rates going up has kind of sparked that, I think, as well as just buyer fatigue of it's been so nuts for so long. I'm kind of done. Like, this is crazy. I'm over it. Right. So with the starting sooner, it's ended sooner. Um, what's going to happen And this always happens. So for those looking to buy, you'll start to see things on four, five, six, seven, 10, 12, 14 days. They'll, they'll survive the weekend as we call it in the business when we have a listing that, or a house that survives the weekend. Um, you'll start to see more of those. And your immediate thought will be, well, what's wrong with it? <laughs> There's not always something wrong with it. Sometimes there is. A lot of times there isn't. When it starts, when the shift starts and it takes some buyers out, then that starts to at least closer. We are so far from level of supply and demand, but at least bringing, you know, some of that demand down, um, it's not going to absorb all of that supply as quickly as it has been. So our days on market will start to extend just a little bit. Um, as far as the buyer piece, you won't have to compete quite as crazy. Like, and a lot of buyers aren't going to realize that yet. So even though there are only maybe four or five offers on a property, all four or five, maybe 10% over list or more, just because that's the expectation that those buyers have had and it hasn't really adjusted down and the houses haven't been on long enough and the price reductions aren't common enough for those buyers to have a different level of expectation. So that's going to happen a little bit on the buy side, the sell side. Um, the sellers are just now, because media is always delayed, right? Media is, especially when we're looking at statistics that are month end and it's four or five, six weeks after property was listed and closed and the numbers come out. Um, sellers are not going to realize that that is starting to shift against their favor, right? So it's still a seller's market. It's still a great time to sell your property. But if you're like, hey, I want to get in on this hot market before things change, it's starting to change. So get in now. I have some clients that I met with um, or some sellers that I met with earlier this week that were like, Hey, we know things are happening. We're not really sure what, how quick we need to get this on. And I'm like, guys, the sooner the better. Okay. Um, so sellers are not going to realize that yet. And they're going to have this freak out like, oh, my house didn't sell in the first five days. What's wrong? What do I do? You know, and we're, we always just have to temper that and just say, just calm down. <laughs> it's, you know, a half a million to a million bucks for your place. <laughs> Cause that's medium price point here in Denver is about 700 K. So, you know, temper the expectations a little bit. All right. So that's part of it as well. Um, the price reductions, when you start to see those, then that tells you a little bit more of demand and supply. The properties buyers are going to expect, they're going to offer on the nicer places than the, hey, this is better than nothing place. Okay. Um, so if you're selling your property, always presenting it in the best possible light will get you the best option and the best end result. But now it's not just, eh, it's fine. I can stick it out there. It'll sell. Sure. But probably not for the top dollar that you're expecting. Okay. So understanding that expectation and change and how you're presenting the property as well as days on market. The other thing I like to talk about is the delayed auction. I don't really have a name for it, but delayed auction isn't bad, but it doesn't, it's not as intuitive as what I would like. So, and this happens all the time. And I am telling all my buyers and all my sellers this because it's going to start to happen. And I want to set a realistic expectation, especially with the buyers. So a lot of times what happens at the very beginning of these market shifts um, and these are seasonal shift guys. I'm not talking like housing crash or through the roof skyrocket values. I'm talking just typical seasonal adjustments and shifts, right? Um, and sorry if I'm checking monitor, kids are sleeping. <laughs> so I've got to keep an eye on the, uh, the nap time here. Um, what's going to start to happen is these 
delayed auctions where a property survives a weekend. It's been on the market, you know, seven, eight, nine days. Usually people will wait through the second weekend, right? It's, oh, it made it through two weekends and it didn't sell. And that's about when the sellers are thinking about maybe we should do a price adjustment and the, and the agents are like, we can do that. Sure. If you got to get rid of it and we, and you're motivated, makes sense. Right. But maybe let's give it a little bit of time. Like, you know, maybe it's not just flying off the shelf, not the end of the world. So the sellers are kind of freaking out, thinking about doing a price adjustment. The buyers are thinking like, oh, I can get a deal, which they really want really bad because they haven't been able to get one in years <laughs> other than in these little seasonal pockets. Right. But they're starting to think, oh, that one's been on the market. Maybe I can offer less and I can get a deal and I can feel good about this purchase versus feeling like I've just been getting bent over for forever. Um, so they're going to wait until that you know, day 10, 11, 12 window that it's been on. So it's been on one weekend, it's been on the second weekend. And when it makes it to Monday and it's not under contract, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that, that next week, um, on the way into the third weekend, those buyers will be like, well, let's make an offer for, I don't know, like five or 10 grand less or 20 grand less or some percentage, you know, a couple percent less because they want to get a deal. You're not that smart. Every other buyer thinks the same thing. <laughs> so what happens, and I mean, it's a great, conceptually it's a great idea but you're not the only person thinking it um so what ends up happening and this happens to me all the time in the summer season q3 um end of you know end of q2 early q3 that kind of stuff it happens all the time on both the listing side and the buy side is you'll do that you know maybe as a buyer you'll think oh i can get a deal i'm gonna offer a little bit less but so will the two or three other people that has kind of been on their back burner too because they've been getting screwed and they're not really okay with it either and they're wanting to pick up a deal and not be you know not having a bit over and then you end up in this weird like back and forth multiple offer situation where everybody's squabbling and then a lot of times the seller's like dude just give me what the list prices and you can have it you don't have to bid above or maybe you do you know and now we're in this later bid over asking price situation, even though it's 12, 14 days on the market. And so I laugh because I'm like, yes, theoretically that makes sense as well as to the other 10 or 15 people that are thinking that maybe they'll do that. Or it's usually two or three parties that are going back and forth as far as potential buyers that are two, three, maybe four that are like, Hey, it's a really nice property. You know, my buyer loves it. And then they'll send an offer for like $5,000 less. It's like, yeah, but you know, I got these two others that are doing the same thing, guys. If you just give the list price, chances are you can get it which I know that sounds bad, but in this market, that's not a bad thing is not having to bid over 10, 15, 20%. Um, by the way, our average sale to list price after all the properties closed for March for the Denver metro area, 106.5% um, over the list price. So, and that's on an average across everything here in the metro. That includes the good stuff, the bad stuff, everything. So the good stuff has been closer to 10, 15, 20% over. The not so great stuff has been anywhere from, you know, list price to 10% over. So to average six and a half percent over the list price and then complain that you have to pay the list price on the house because it's been on the market for, I don't know, eight days or 10 days. Come on, guys, like be realistic with this stuff. So I, I'll put it out there now. The delayed auction will happen if you were in the buying situation, selling situation anytime here in the next probably month, month and a half, up to two months until people start to realize kind of the market situation shifts just a little bit. So um Anyway, it's, it's started about, you know, six weeks ago. It's definitely rolling that into a little bit more now. Keep in mind, those values are still high. So if you bought something two, three, four months ago, don't feel like you got screwed. Your property is still appreciated since then because the market has continued to have solid demand. It might not be going up at, you know, the 20% every three months or something nuts just because the prices aren't getting bid up seasonally like they were a couple months ago. But don't be worried that you bought too soon or something like that. You bought when the rates were better. <laughs> So chances are you're still paying less on something that if it were listed now would be listed at the higher price and it would cost a buyer more because the rates have gone up. So, and if you want to talk about the waiting, you know, versus buying now thing, I'll link to a video that I just posted up here and down below about sometimes you can wait yourself into a hole, especially if prices keep going up, even if it's at a slower appreciation rate, they can still go up. Um, and the rates, the interest rates going up as well. That's, that's squeezing a lot of people into a tough situation. So anyway, if you're looking to buy or sell here in Denver, please feel free to reach out to me. I love my job. I would love the opportunity for an interview. Um, you, cause I'm a huge proponent of interviewing agents. As I always say, you should talk to more than one person when you're hiring someone to do a job for you, but 
My contact information is on my website. The link for that is down below. Um, if you need an agent in another area and you want me to screen them for you, I do this for a living. I know if I were going to hire an agent, what I would ask them. I have an, I'm, my network's up to over 230 agents now across the U.S. So I would love to get some information from you and see what agent might be the best fit for you and make a recommendation that makes sense, um, especially if you're moving to Denver or from Denver and you need a good contact where you're at or where you're going. So feel free to reach out to me um, via my website. My contact info is on there and um, I'll set you up with that as well. So thanks so much for the time and have a great day.